Hi. Now in this example, we've got a ladder of length 5 meters and mass 18 kilograms. There's one end A resting on a horizontal ground, and its other end, B, lies on a smooth vertical wall. And the ladder lies in a vertical plane perpendicular to the wall and makes an angle alpha with the horizontal ground, where we're told that tan alpha equals 4 thirds. The coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground is mu, and a woman of mass 60 kilograms stands on the ladder at the point C, where AC is 3 meters. The ladder is on the point of slipping, and the ladder is modeled as a uniform rod, and the woman as a particle. And what we've got to do is find the value of the coefficient of friction mu. So if this is a problem you'd like to try, just uh, pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back, if you had a go. So, let's first of all start to add some forces on this. We're told that the ladder is modelled as a uniform rod, and the woman as a particle. So, if the ladder is uniform, its weight is going to act in the middle. And it has a mass of 18 kilograms, so its weight will be 18 G Newton. So we'll mark that in the middle. Let's just say this is the middle here, and its weight will act downwards. So just mark that in there as 18 G Newtons. Now we have a woman that is standing on the ladder at the point C, and the woman has a mass, we're told, of 60 kilograms. So that would be 60 G for her weight acting down here. 60 G Newtons. What else would we have? Well, there'll be a reaction at the point A. So there'll be a normal contact force. We'll just mark that on as that one there. We'll call it a reaction from the point A. So we'll write a little subscript there, RA Newtons. And because the ladder wants to slip away, move out to the left, then there's the frictional force, because we're told it's rough ground. The frictional force is going to act in the opposite direction to motion, towards the wall. And that's going to be mu r, because it's on the point of slipping. Okay, uh, Somewhere I read that it was on the point of slipping. Here it is here. Okay. So this will be mu r, so mu multiplied by r a, and that would be measured in newtons. Now there's going to be a normal contact force at b, but the wall is smooth, so there's no friction involved. Okay, This will be the only contact force at b, and I'll call that r with a little subscript there, b, and that would be measured in newtons. So we've got all the forces. Normally, when I get something like this, though, I'd want to, let's say, draw a dotted line that is perpendicular to the rod. So something like that. We'll just mark that one in. And we've got one here we'll mark in. And let's put some angles on. OK, so we've got that this angle is alpha. So we've got two parallel lines here, so this angle up here would also be alpha. It's alternate to this one here. And we should be familiar with the fact that when we get planes, for instance, this angle when it's alpha, this angle also is equal to that one there. And we'll mark that in like so. So. We also know that tan alpha, let's just mark it in here, we're told that tan alpha equals 4 thirds, so just pop that in there. OK, well it looks like uh, we're finished now with the diagram. Now to do a problem like this, what I notice is that we've got three unknowns, RA, RB, and mu. And that will mean that we'll need three independent equations. And we get these equations by considering resolving in two perpendicular directions, say vertically and horizontally. And then the third independent equation comes from taking moments about some particular point. 
So that's how we're going to uh, go about this particular problem. Okay, well, we don't need the question anymore. We've got some room, so let's just start on resolving vertically. So if we resolve vertically, what we've got then is all of our A acts upwards, and then we've got minus the weight, 18G, and then the weight of the woman, minus 60G, that acts downwards. And as for RB and mu RA, they don't enter the equation because they're perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. This is our resultant force, and our ladder is in equilibrium, so there'll be no resultant force. And so therefore, from this, we can make RA the subject, and it equals 78G. Okay, so we've got that. Now, let's resolve in the horizontal direction. So if we resolve horizontally, we'll take to the right as positive. We've got mu multiplied by RA, and then we've got minus RB, and that's it because all these other forces are perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. Again, there's no resultant force. The ladder is in equilibrium, so this equals zero. And if we rearrange this, we've got RB will equal mu RA. But RA is 78G, so we're going to have 78G multiplied by mu. Okay, so with that got, we've got that far. We need a third equation, and now we take moments. And you can take moments about any point you like, okay, on the ladder. I'm going to take moments, though, about A. And the reason I'm going to take moments about A is just purely because I can see we've got two forces passing through A, and if I take moments about here, it just means that they're eliminated as they pass through the point A. But why don't you just try taking moments as an exercise about, say, B, or even about C, or even the middle of the ladder here, and compare your methods. Anyway, so we're going to take moments about A in this example, so we'll indicate that just by saying moments about A, and we'll set up a positive sense. And again, it doesn't matter which way we take the positive sense, Again, experiment, okay? You should be able to get exactly the same result at the end of the day. I'm going to take clockwise as moment, uh, as positive, all right? So we'll mark that in like so. Right, now, when it comes to taking moments about A, these two forces then do not come into the equation. But when it comes to, say, the weight of the ladder, 18 G Newtons, is inclined. So what we do is we split this into two components, one away from the ladder and one down the ladder. The one down the ladder has no effect because its force will pass through A. We're just interested with the component away from the ladder. And that will be 18 G cos alpha. So we've got the force then, 18 G cos alpha, and that is multiplied by the distance back to A, which is going to be half of 5 meters, which is going to be 2.5 meters. Now, a similar argument holds for the weight of the woman, the 60 G newtons. Split this into two components. The one down the ladder passes through A, so we forget about that one. But we're only concerned with this one, away from the ladder, which is going to be 60 G cos alpha, and that would be multiplied by the distance back to A, which is 3 meters. So multiply that then by 3. And this too will want to turn it in a clockwise sense about A, so that's going to be plus. Now for RB, we can split this into two components, one perpendicular to the ladder and one along the ladder. 
The one along the ladder has no effect because it passes through A. We're just interested in this component away from the ladder. So that's going to be RB sine alpha. So it's also going to want to turn it in an anti-clockwise sense about A. So it's going to be negative. So we've got the force RB, which is 78G. We can pick it up from there. 78G multiplied by mu multiplied by the sine of alpha. And that will be our component of force then away from the ladder here. And we need to multiply that by the distance back to A to get its moment, and that's 5. So if we multiply that by 5. Now this is our resultant moment, but the ladder is in equilibrium, so that resultant moment is going to equal 0. Now I can see that in each of these terms we've got G, so we can cancel that out. Okay, save us having to substitute into our equation. And the next thing I want to do is also divide through by cosine alpha. If we divide by cosine alpha, then we're just going to be left with 18 times 2.5 here. So we've therefore got 18 multiplied by 2.5. And then when we divide this term by cosine alpha, we're just left with 60 times 3 plus 60 times 3. And then when we get to this term, sine alpha divided by cosine alpha gives us tan alpha. So what we're left with here is minus 78 multiplied by mu multiplied by the 5 multiplied by tan alpha. But tan alpha is 4 thirds, so we can substitute that in there. And all of this equals 0. Now if we work out 18 times 2.5 plus 60 times 3, we end up with 225. So therefore 225, and then if we work this part out, 78 times 5 times 4 thirds, you get 520. So we've got minus 520 mu, and that equals 0. So if we rearrange this for mu, We've got 225 equals 520 mu. Divide both sides by 520, so mu equals 225 divided by 520. And this comes to 0.4326 and so on. And if we round this, say, to two decimal places, it's 0.4322 decimal places, 2 dp. Okay? So I hope it's given you an idea on essentially how we go about many of these kind of ladder-based problems. We tend to resolve vertically, horizontally, and then take moments about any point. Quite often, though, you will find the best place to take moments is about one of the ends, though. Okay?